right, this is a comment or question that I've had from a number of people. Uh, I'm not going to put anybody's name on the chopping block here. I'll take the heat for it, if there is any. And the question is, I found this book called The A-Swing, and I looked at it, and it seemed to me like almost everything that I read in The A-Swing was almost exactly what you said Joe Nichols was about. Well, here's the interesting thing. I try to read pretty much everything that's out there. If somebody comes up with a book, I read it, because I just want to see what's going on. I want to see what ideas there are, who's doing what, how they're verbalizing it, how they're, whatever they're doing with it. And I put it through my test process relative to what I understand, what I know about the human body, how I know people learn to see if it makes sense. And if it makes sense to me, I might try it. And if I try it and it's helpful, I may use it. I mean, so I'm not closed-minded to this is the only way to do it. Uh, so I'm always looking for things. So there was a lot of build-up for this A-Swing book coming out. And when it came out, I bought it. And I sat down and I started to read it. And my first instinct was I didn't know that, uh, that David was an uh, understudy of Joe Nichols because most of the book is exactly what Joe taught. Now, there's a couple of things that aren't. And, you know, I've even asked him about it. Of course, they had had nothing to do with Joe. They don't know Joe. They didn't be, you know, okay, fine. Well, then somehow, randomly, you just fell into this discovery thing of something that's almost verbatim relative to somebody that I spent a lot of time and years with and listened to the vocabulary. Now, here's what I will say relative to the A-swing in Joe Nichols. There's one thing that's significantly different, and basically, really, only one thing. In the A-swing, they talk about you get the club up here, and when you come down, you want the shaft to do this, this whole shallow the shaft thing. Joe hated that. He absolutely detested the club going this way. Joe wanted you to feel like you, you stood the club up, you went up to the top, and when you started down, that you stood the club back up. So he wanted it to do this, feeling-wise. He didn't want anything to do with the club going this way that would push the handle out away from you and make you have to do anything relative to turning your forearms over. Because his whole deal was he wanted the club here the club to run into the ball, and then the momentum of the club and the club head, he said to break up. So he wanted the toe of the club to feel like that once you hit the ball, that the toe of the club broke up. He didn't want anything to do with this. So anytime you get the club going this way, something's going to have to, whether it's the momentum of your body making it go this, something's going to have to catch that club head up, and most of the time, when the club gets back here and somebody catches it up, it's going to do that. So uh, back to the question. I mean, I've studied this golf swing as, you know, I don't know. I mean, who, as much as anybody, the physiology. I mean, I, I don't know. I've spent a ton of time. Let's just put it that way. I read everything that's out there. There isn't anything new. Anytime somebody says, here's what we've come up with. That's my first red light. That's my first warning sign. Because there is not a whole lot new. Joe didn't even say he was new. Joe learned a lot of his stuff from a number of different teachers and from absor absorbing, observing Hogan, Byron Nelson, and a few. He'd watch them and then he'd, he'd try to practice it and see if he could do it. Bill Melhorn was a guy that, that Joe heard some stuff about and read some stuff about. And while Bill Merrillhorn was all about hands and how the hands and the wrists and how this, how this worked, you know, it was this hand action and how your wrist hinged, unhinged, and rehinged, and the club stayed in front of you, and your body just turned and the club stayed in front of you. So it's interesting, most of these guys today have spent no time studying old teachers or the history of golf instruction. Uh, from the 1850s on. I spent a lot of time reading all these old books. So when somebody says, here's what we've come up with, 
pretty much anything they think they've come up with. I can find an article or a book that was written probably prior to 1900 that pretty much says the same thing. So what I think we're understanding more and more is the human body, because it hasn't changed since 1856 now. It works the same way. So the more we start to understand how the human body works, we're going to be able to sort through ideas about the swing and marry them with how the body's designed to work. Now here's where we're getting into trouble with a lot of the biomechanics, is they're coming up with the most efficient way to maximize speed. Well, sometimes that maximum speed creates a tremendous amount of adverse force on the body in areas it's not designed to handle it. Now, the answer right now is, well, you go to the gym and you get stronger in those areas, so an area that's not designed to handle this force isn't going to get hurt. Okay, that's insanity. That's building a huge strength imbalance, and that's setting you up long term for more injuries. You know, if they wanted to go the right direction with this, how do we swing with the most amount of efficiency, the most amount of force, and the least chance for injury? That starts to make sense because the difference between something that generates a tremendous amount of force and maybe a little less but is safer and more consistent isn't that much relative to club head speed to go after it and ruin a career or, or ruin a golf game or blow a back out for an extra two to five miles an hour club head speed. Uh, so that's my opinion again. So back to the whole concept of books and everything. There's nothing I've come up with that's me, seriously. I mean, I understand the human body. Whoever designed this body has helped me to kind of see what's the most efficient way to do it. But this isn't, they, they say the Malaska move. Okay, I appreciate that, but it's not my move. There's been guys talking about tipping the club out for, for a generation, for, for 200 years there were guys that talked about that. So it's an interpretation and it might be the first time you've heard it and I put a lot of these things together but nobody out there nothing believe me relative to what I've studied uh, find me anything that's new now there's new technology that allows us to see different information relative to that same idea so they present the new information relative to that same idea and they say oh this is brand new it's not new it is not new. This is pretty simple motion. It's a pretty simple action. It's not that hard to be efficient. It's not that hard to play golf, hit it well enough to have fun with the game. And what's really funny is all these old guys, before they had video, before we had force plays, before we had all of this, the Sam Sneeds and the Hogans and the, the Gene Sarazens and the, the, the Sam, you know, all these guys, uh, they learned to play golf, they watched, and then they'd make swings, they'd get on, they'd, they'd check different feelings, and they'd hear somebody talk about something, and they'd try it, they'd add this and add that to it, so the old thing was dig it out of the dirt, so they'd practice, they didn't have a lot of this stuff. And right now, uh, there's a lot of ideas about golf, but one thing that I heard, that now I understand why they said it and I heard it from a number of players and I read it in articles and I had a guy actually do this with me what I'm going to show you here now this is an exaggeration but it get it, it proves a point because most everybody's standing here trying to hit a golf ball now and they go back here and you're trying to get off your right side and clear your hips and everybody moves up into the ball they, they, I would say 95 percent of the people who come and take lessons from me the first thing on their backswing their right hip doesn't get out of the way, it doesn't move, it stays there, so when their hips turn, they've already moved closer to the ball. I mean, they're, right now we're dead because that's going to turn into this. But the other thing is, once they get back here, the first move they make is they're trying to turn their hips and get off their right side. So they go like this. And they move, you move right up into the ball. All right. So Sam Sneed was probably the most renowned relative to what I'm going to tell you, he said it the most and probably did it the best, which probably played into why he hit it so well. So I got this chair sitting here. Now, this chair is a little low for me. I mean, I would need a stool that's just barely below my rear end. So I get set up here. Now, what they all talked about was sit-down position. So they said they 
went up to the top of the swing and the first thing they felt when they went down is they felt like they sat down into the chair and then they hit it and stood up. So they went back, they sat down, and then they hit. So I actually hit quite a few balls doing that. Now here's the interesting thing. If I'm going to go back and from here you tell me sit down, sit down, sit down, where are my hips going? Well, they're sure as heck not going to go this way. So all these players talked about sit-down position. Well, if I'm here and I'm going to sit down, where do my hips go? Because you're going from here and you're going to sit down. So they're moving further away from the ball and down. I'm also compressing things. So most everybody goes slightly down. They sit down and they go down so they can hit the ball and push away from it. They don't start from here and immediately push up, which is what most amateurs do. So this whole chair thing, if you just get a chair that's just a few inches lower than your rear end, and you stand there and you go here and then you go and you sit in the chair, sit in the chair, sit in the chair, sit in the chair, sit. And then you set up to the ball and you go sit and hit. That's going to help you a bunch because the chair is going to tell you if you're moving up into it and you get a feel for it. That's a really good drill to help to feel how to transition and not move up into it. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for regular updates and tips. Thanks for watching.